What is up, party people? Bet you're wondering why we're here and not on our computer. Guess you're wondering what may have happened. What type of things may have happened to be filled our LFS install? <laughs> Nothing. Just nobody told me I had a four-hour video to convert, and it took 12 hours to do it. So I kept going. But I took screenshots for you. Hopefully you kept going too. Okay. So basically after we got done compiling our kernel, this is what we came to with output. Okay. Very end here. I typed free M in. I wanted to check my usage. But this is what you should have got. No massive errors, no catastrophes or anything else like that. You should be in RA. Okay. Then after that I followed with the book on page two forty four and I copied over my architecture uh, which was in the Arch i386 boot BZ image that's our kernel BZ image is your kernel let's see if I can get closer there we go okay BZ image is your kernel and when you copy it you're not copying it into an LFS uh, folder but at the same time when you copy it you're renaming it LFS kernel 2.61627 Okay, so when it comes out raw, it comes out as be that image. So these are the commands you type in here. All right, follow them on page 244. You just copy in the architects folder i386. If you have a different architecture, PowerPC, Spark Alpha, um, or x86 underscore 64, that's where your install is going to be. But on my 686 machine, which is compatible with i386, that's where it's at. Okay, and after that, we were told to copy over our system dot map. Okay, and as we copy that, also change the name of it. The system dot map dot two six two six uh, two point six one six two seven. Okay, so that's what we did. Um, after that, we we're told to copy over a dot config file. Okay to our boot without a dot in it. Alright, we had to copy it to our boot config uh, with the suffix. Okay, now the dot config file, um, anything with a dot in front of it is hidden. I'll show you that real quick now. Okay, this is my desktop. Okay, if I were to say list, list out my desktop. Okay. So if I say LA, which is list all, I display hidden stuff that's on my desktop too. Okay. And it's hidden. It's got a dot in front of it. Okay. So basically I can make a folder. I could call it, uh, make a folder and I'll call it nothing. As you can see now here, this folder, the directory I just made, nothing exists now. Okay. But if I move nothing to dot, nothing and I clear and I list that out again you see it's gone it's hidden if I list all again you will see that I have a dot nothing file okay I have a hidden folder okay so basically that's what So you don't want to co uh, copy this out line for line, all right? And the book shows you not to, but uh, you could get confused on this. Okay, copy over the dot config to config. Okay, Th this uh, in your boot directory. Okay, okay. Now um, I also did um, installing the uh, Linux documentation as the book told me to on 244. Okay, went ahead with that. So that's done. Okay, and the next portion here, we started up Grub. Um, you can find more about Grub on page, starting at page 246. Okay, all, you, all we did was type in Grub. Okay, it brings up that. Now, with Grub, some people have uh, a hard time with Grub, and it can be tricky first time go around. Um, in order for you to first uh, get a hard drive going, uh, you have to initialize it. Okay, 
Well, you should. I don't know if you have to, but you should. Okay. If you're this far in the game, you do get superstitious, so maybe it is superstition. Alright. But in order to initialize the hard drive, let's type in root. And grub starts from zero. Zero counts as one with grub. Okay. So your first hard drive would be HD0, like here. Okay. And if you had five hard drives, your fifth hard drive would actually be HD4. Is that how it would go? Yeah. HD4. Okay be your fifth hard drive. But on this is my first hard drive, so HD0 is my first hard drive, third partition, okay, because grub counts zero as one as a beginning. So my third partition, I don't have three partitions on that hard drive, okay, that's okay. Um, on here I said the first hard drive, which is HDO, um, second partition, my second partition is, you remember we set that up as swap, okay, type 82 right here, okay. Um, then I initialized my uh, first partition, first hard drive, which was where our, our LFS installs at, and that's type 83, okay. I did it again for good measure. And then I said set up HD0. If, um, if you're installing this next to something you already have Grub installed, um, don't do this. But I did it because there's nothing else on my hard drive. If you're installing this next to your uh, your main machine, uh, you might not have to do all this. Okay, um, just append the uh, LFS through your um, your grub you already have installed. But we started from zero, from scratch. So, and after you do that, um, stage 1.5 exists. Stage two exists. Okay. Or 1.5 doesn't exist. 1 and 2 exist. 1.5 doesn't. That's okay. Alright. And uh, we set up our menu.list. Okay. Did I show you how to do that? I don't know. I don't think I showed you how to set up your menu.list, but I will really soon. You need to set up your menu.list after. Yeah. Okay. We touched the menu.list. We didn't, we didn't do anything to it. We created it. I don't think anyway. we didn't do anything to it. Pretty sure we didn't. Okay. But I'll show you how to set up a menu.list file. Menu.list file is going to be read by Grub, but we'll get into that. Okay. Sometimes you might run into problems here where it says checking if uh, boot stage one exists. You might get no. You might get no again, and, and uh, that'll stay no. And you'll get like a fatal error. Okay. Uh, that happens. And I learned it with Gen2. It's a bug with Grub. Grub has a hard time remounting your hard drives. Okay, has a hard time um, doing that. Or Grub has a hard time reading a mounted hard drive. Is what I want to say. Okay, so if that is the case, um, unmount your hard drive and remount it and reinstall Grub. Okay, um, you might not be able to do that since you're still logged in as LFS and all that other stuff like that. All right, um, but your kernel's over and everything else. A lot of times I use stuff uh, like uh, I get grub, okay, or try grub a few times, okay. It might kick in, maybe three or four. If it doesn't kick in, um, you can use uh, Gparted. I use Gparted Live CD, um, has grub on it, and I can reinstall grub to um, an operating system, okay. But if if this doesn't happen to you, if you if you if you succeed, if you get yes, yes, no, and you know, if you're okay, you don't worry about that. Sometimes you will worry about that. You get into trouble. Okay. All right. This is our menu dot list file. As before, we touched the menu dot list, but we didn't uh, write into it. Okay. And this is us writing into the menu dot list file. And um, basically, you know, we're doing a cat cat into the grub menu dot list. Okay. You can find that. Um, on page 247. Okay. Um, default 0, timeout 10. Timeout, you can change that 10 to 300. It'll take 300 seconds to boot your machine. Okay. Um, color, you get a color on it instead of a, a default gray and black. Uh, this says a little green and black. Gen 2 had a little splash character uh, thing. I don't know what it was. Okay. Um, title. You can set anything to the title if you want to say Sammy's LFS install or failed LFS install or half LFS install, do that. Okay. Then you gotta tell where the root's at. Our root is at hard drive one or HD zero. Um 
partition one, zero counts as one, is a starting point. Okay, so that's where our root partition is. We need to specify where the kernel's at. Our kernel, after you type in kernel, is um, at boot lfs kernel dash two six two six one six two seven. Okay. Um, if you if you named it something else, that's the name you need to put in. But that's what I named it. Okay. And specify where your root partition's at. Dev HDA HDA one. Okay. Up here is HD. It's counting for zero. Down here, you're staying true to HDA one. Okay. If you have a SATA drive, um, if, if your dev is SDA one, then you need to put in SDA one. Okay. But on this, my drive is HDA one. Uh, IDE, I think, is HDA one. Okay. A lot of times too, when you're running in the grub, this is gets read by grub when you're trying to boot. And if you have those off or wrong, if your drive is actually HDB, as in Bob, HDB1, um, Grub's going to read it and boot that hard drive or not boot at all. Okay. Um, with Grub, uh, Grub's good because you can also um, edit the commands too. Alright, so when you edit them at the Grub, uh, at the Grub, when you boot up your computer and you edit the Grub commands, you're not really changing anything, but you can make the system bootable. Okay, it's like a temporary fix. Once you change that, then you can get into your menu.list file after your operating system's running, and you can uh, change that to where it's got to go. But this is how mine was. And that's what I'm going with. Okay. And also, I created a link. Um, I made a directory Etsy Grub, and I linked um, boot grub menu.list back to Etsy Grub. Okay. That's the output there. Um, basically what that's doing is, did I have to? I don't think I had to do that. I did it anyway, um, because uh, it's a, it, a lot of times with live CDs, I don't know if you noticed or not, if you go into the boot area of a live CD and you click on it, sometimes it's a link back to itself, okay? So you click on the boot, and then you go back in and you see another boot and, um, you know, whatever kernel in there, and you click on it again, it's just linking back to each other, kind of like a loop, okay? So that's why I did that. In case uh, sometimes you don't have a boot uh, directory when you boot up, or at your at your root directory, sometimes you don't have a boot directory, okay? Because you reside already inside the boot directory. So um, if that was the case, then you have a pointer pointing back um, in a loop, so you can always uh, get to you can always use your boot directory from where you are in the root directory. Hope that got through. Okay. And then after that, um, that was all done, and we were done. Uh, I echoed um, 6.2 LFS into the LFS releases. Okay, as the book told me to on page 248. Okay. Um, then it tells us that we can log out. That's what I typed in. I typed in log out. And after I typed in log out, um, I typed in uh, U mount um, for both. Dallas on LFS dev PTS it said device busy twice and I didn't know why but I remembered that we failed <laughs> well I failed after my computer took a crap uh, I don't remember if you remember um, back in a previous tutorial after my computer went to sleep and killed my SSH connection I had to log back in okay um, I could no longer use the LFS variable because my LFS variable is not defined anymore but I do remember what it was defined as. Okay, as you can see here, I'm testing out my LSS, LFS variable, and I got no output. Okay, it wasn't defined. Okay, so I remember what it was, and instead of using the LFS variable, I inserted what it meant, which was mount LFS. Okay, and after I did that, I typed it out the whole string instead of saying LFS variable and used the, uh, the path instead without the variable. I was able to unmount my PTS, okay, and then I unmounted Shim, and then I unmounted Dev, uh, uh, le, mounted LFS Dev, and I unmounted my proc sys, and then finally I mounted mount LFS, okay. For you, it would just be. For you, it would just be, you mount, v dollar sign LFS, okay. That LFS, that LFS actually means mount LFS. Okay, 
You knew that by now. Okay. Okay. So those are the problems that I had. Exit this out. Oh, what an E, man. What an E. Those are the problems that I had. Alright. Um, the next shot is me typing in reboot or shut down R now. Actually, shut down R now. <laughs> For me, it just rebooted my computer. And I rebooted it with the, uh, the live CDN. So, that wasn't cool. But, um, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you the actual reboot. I, I rebooted my computer with the live CDN, and the live CD came back through. So, really, I didn't reboot my hard drive. So, I saved the uh, first reboot for you guys. Alright. And, um, as far as unmounting your hard drives, you want to do a clean unmount, okay? It's kind of like a tree. Kill the, uh, the, the last drives first, okay? Instead of, if I went and just said unmount LFS from the top, uh, I could leave, there's, there might have been processes running on dev and, uh, PTS, alright? And, uh, I don't want to mess up those processes this late into the game, okay? I want to do a nice clean unmount. I want to unmount the last mounted hard drive first, or the last mounted, uh, partition first, okay? Or the last mounted anything first. I want to unmount that first before I unmount where it's mounted to, okay? Okay. Hope you got it. And we're on to the next one.